good afternoon again. Again up uh, by one of my favourite meditation places in the wood. This is where I like to sit on this old stump beside me myself. Um, one of the questions I brought with me today is uh, for, uh, from again a young man asking me, have I ever tried psychedelic drugs to change my mind? Well, perhaps you'll find this hard to believe, but when I was a young man at the age when I might have done this, I really didn't, never heard of the things because at that time I was so interested and in love with farming that I thought of little else but sheep and cows. <laughs> So the world of psychedelic drugs just passed me by. And even if I did hear on, hear on uh, sort of rumours of them, it never made, I was never interested enough to, to ask anything else about them. So it's only really as I got older that I learnt the history that people had been using these things. But really what interested me more about this question was, was the latter end of it when he said, to change your mind. And I thought, well, whatever does this chap want to change his mind for, for heaven's sake? What's the point of changing your mind? Now then, let me just illustrate what I mean. Here am I standing only a few hundred feet above the little town of Bakewell where I live. Now look, if we'll turn the camera around in a moment, down there you have, what's it, uh, I think we've got 4,000 people living in Bakewell, all of which have all their different states of mind, and some, no doubt, are very mixed up. But certainly they're all different. And here am I, standing above it all. Now, it doesn't bother me what they're thinking. I'm above it. If I was engrossed in that world, talking to them, holding discussion meetings and this, that and the other. Well, I might be, be uh, rubbing off up against them and getting irritated or something. But you see, this is what I call natural meditation. Meditation's all about raising the level of consciousness. I often talk about it like getting in an aeroplane and going up through the clouds. Well, the clouds are the mind. The clouds are all the thoughts in the mind. You get in an aeroplane and what you happens? You go up through the clouds, you look down and you couldn't care less what's happening to the clouds. You're up in the, you're up in the clear blue sky. What's it matter what the clouds are doing, whether they're blowing this way or that, or they're thunder clouds or some other sort of clouds? Clouds are just clouds. You're not interested in clouds. Now look, here am I. I'm up above this level of mind, at least the thinking mind, which is what most of us refer to as the mind, I'm above it. It doesn't bother me at all. Let them think what they want to think. You see, this is the freedom of meditation. This is, it's as simple as this. All you've got to do is just climb up a bit. Now, if you haven't got a convenient hill like this, well, you haven't got a handy skyscraper or something, or a balloon. <laughs> You may just have to somehow look at a picture, maybe. A lot of people do have pictures of mountains and things in their rooms, don't they? Because they look at them and feel better. Well, there we are. You see, this is how utterly simple it is. And this is freedom and that's, you know, fretting about trying to change your mind. If you try to change your mind, you're, you're most more often, more likely than not, just to go out of the frying pan into the fire. <laughs> you know, to go into another state of mind, won't you? You'll go from a state of mind you don't like to a state of mind you do like, but you'll still be a prisoner of the mind. That's not freedom. It's really beyond my experience that, so I can't perhaps... All I can say is what I've just said, that I've never felt the need for anything and I prefer to just climb a hill. <laughs> or 
my second farm was out was on the flat Fenland where there wasn't a hill for a hundred miles. It was dead flat, flat as a pancake. But just just stepping outside the house had the same effect because you just expanded into this enormity of space and this lovely sky. So often just if you haven't got a hill, just stepping outside. Well it is it got elevated by the flatness so much as by the space. Yes, I absolutely love space. And uh, again, this connects very much with meditation because it's, when you get out into, into, into the, 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 the prairies or the big spaces or the, our English equivalent, which was the fens, um, it, was, it was the old marshland, of course, before it was drained. Um, there's nothing to stop you, it's all open and so you expand in all directions, there are no fences, no hedges, no trees, it's just total open space and, and this glorious sky above and you just, oh, well that again is just meditation isn't it? It's like going above the clouds, um, well another version of it isn't it, just expanding into this wonderful space. And here again, you just forget about the mind. You look back and the mind's really just a little layer of little thinkery, thinkery, thunk, and it's really, it's just peanuts, really. <laughs> Don't worry about the mind. <laughs> Shall I give you a little demonstration? There was a woman who, who, was, uh, who rings me up and asks about meditation, and she was terribly upset about her thoughts uh, last night. I was showing her a favourite trick. Look, if you're not lucky enough to have to have 100 miles of open fenland outside your door or a little hill like this to climb, look, here you are sitting indoors trying to change your mind, you know, all you've got worrying about your thoughts, shall I do this or shall I do that or go this or we'll do that or love this girl or that one. And, you know, all you've got to really do is just do this. Now look carefully, watch carefully. <laughs> Here I am back in my problems. <laughs> and here's freedom. God bless you, dears. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>